Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. For Flight and Sirius XM hookup, FAA clamps down on Santa Monica's latest airport action. More details on Malaysian Air MH17 shootdown in 2014. I'm Brie Cross of September 30th, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. For Flight and Sirius XM have introduced Sirius XM Aviation Weather Service on the newest version of For Flight Mobile. For Flight's latest release, which is version 8.1, is now available on the iTunes App Store. The For Flight app with SXAR1 portable receiver can now access Sirius XM's Aviation Weather Service, which will provide access to satellite delivered graphical weather and aviation information, which includes NEXRAD, lightning strike locations, high resolution composite radar plus base reflectivity radar and much more. The SXAR portable receiver connects via Bluetooth to an Apple iPad or iPhone to wirelessly deliver Sirius XM aviation weather to the ForeFlight mobile app. We are told it's compact and easy to mount in the cockpit. Sirius XM is currently offering a $200 savings to pilots who buy the SXAR1 and activate the ForeFlight subscription package. This is our third report this week on the situation regarding the continued operation of the airport at Santa Monica, but the situation is so bizarre it deserves to be covered. Now it's reported the FAA will be taking a very close look at what is described as a starvation strategy on the part of the city of Santa Monica as the city works to close the airport in two years. The city is currently in the process of evicting two fixed-based operations on the airport with the intent to make services on the airport proprietary to the city. It's alleged this action is intended to curtail jet fuel sales by the city to render the airport less attractive to jet operations. It's reported in the Los Angeles Times that the FAA notification to the city said in part, quote, These actions may be causing and appear intended to cause impairment of the airport, including but not limited to a de facto closure of the airport in violation of applicable law. The FAA also said that the city should stop eviction proceedings against Atlantic Aviation and American Flyers. Two FBOs on the airport saying, quote, The FAA strongly recommends that the city withdraw the notices to vacate until such a time as this matter can be resolved. After the break, Dutch investigator holds Russians responsible for MH17 shootdown. The Bristel Light Sport aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. When Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 crashed in eastern Ukraine in 2014, it didn't take long for investigators to determine that the airliner had been downed by a Russian Buk ground-to-air missile. BBC reports that in a news conference held earlier this week, Chief Dutch Police Investigator Wilbert Paulison said that based on the criminal investigation, quote, we have concluded that flight MH17 was down by a Buk missile of the series 9M83 that came from the territory of the Russian Federation. It's reported the missile was transported from Russia to the rebel-held area of Ukraine on July 17. The team also determined that the missile was launched from a specific village, which at the time was held by rebel forces. Other evidence from electronic communications and witnesses was included in the investigation. The Russians continue to deny any complicity in the shootdown. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. We've reported numerous times about drones being shot down by people who claim their privacy is being invaded. These instances have almost taken on a sense of comedy, but Jim says there's nothing funny about it. Here's this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. Got a little bit of an esoteric topic, but every time I read one of these stories about somebody shooting at a drone or blowing a drone out of the sky, 
it just gives me the willies. There's something intrinsically wrong about it. And, and let me state from the beginning. I'm a gun owner. Uh, I've been a concealed carry uh, permit holder. I've uh, worked all over the world in places where I would not have gone outside without a gun. And I've been through courses and training, both military and civilian, uh, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and an ATF course and a number of other things through the years. And at no time was I ever taught anything but the gun comes out only when you are in fear for your life, when you believe that you're in mortal danger, and that if you don't do something, you're about to be dead. At no point have I seen a U.S. drone shooting in which the drone was carrying a weapon, in which the drone posed a potential harm to any person on the ground. And I've yet to understand how, well, it was spying on my daughter, or it was this or it was that, when in many cases, after you look at the data, it's all complete and utter hogwash. None of this stuff, by and large, turns out to be true. And you've got people firing willy-nilly thinking it's okay to shoot a drone. A drone is an aircraft. It is my belief that anybody shooting at a drone should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. It is my opinion and my strong belief that firing into the sky at a small target like a drone, no matter how close it may be or whether you think it's over your property or whatever the case may be, is a dangerous thing to do because ultimately that round may come down and hit somebody. Every year during various celebrations where it's been customary to fire weapons into the air, especially overseas, a lot of those rounds have come down and hurt or killed people. And you can't possibly tell me that firing at a drone, a little plastic device in many cases that's going to shatter, uh, doesn't leave the possibility that round could not go further and harm or kill somebody. There's no excuse for it. I believe this should be prosecuted. When you see this stuff happen in your area, please contact your law enforcement and your elected officials and let them know that a drone shoot down is a dangerous thing, no matter what the drone is doing. And yeah, there are gonna be drone idiots out there like there are idiots in every category. But the drone shoot downs are a huge danger and sooner or later, somebody's gonna get killed. And I just don't wanna see that happen. The drone shoot downs on the part of the FAA, on the part of local, state, and federal law enforcement should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. What do you think? Let me know. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and I'm ready to duck. After these messages, North Korea holds its first air show. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. North Korea held its first ever air show that featured scale models of the F-16 and Chinese J-10 fighter aircraft. It was called the Wonsan International Friendship Air Festival and included ground displays and an aerobatic display by a Hughes MD-500 helicopter. Alaska Airlines has announced they will launch a new service to Havana, Cuba on July 5, 2017. The daily nonstop flight will be from Los Angeles, which is the only nonstop flight to Cuba from the West Coast. Lockheed Martin will build the new CH-53K King Stallion heavy lift helicopter at its facility in Connecticut rather than Florida or South Carolina. Sikorsky will build nearly 200 of the helicopters at the Connecticut facility. 
The FAA has issued an STC to Thomas Global Systems for its TFD-8601 electronic flight instrument system upgrade on Embraer EMB-120 aircraft. The TFD-8601 display is a plug-and-play active matrix liquid crystal display replacement for legacy cathode ray tube displays. A pilot for Eastern Airlines has been fired by the carrier after being accused of a violent crime. He is alleged to have intentionally driven his car to hit a business associate, causing him severe injury. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The South Korean Navy has temporarily grounded all 20 of its Lynx anti-submarine helicopters following an accident Tuesday that fatally injured three military personnel. The Korea Times reports that the aircraft went down in the ocean during a joint exercise with the United States. A Korean official said the aircraft was first operated by the Navy in 1999 and had undergone routine maintenance in August. The pilot had about 770 hours of flying time. Quote, further investigation is necessary to find out what caused the accident, according to the source. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.